Okay, so the next thing that we have here is uh, basically the standard equations of an ellipse. And this is where you basically, where we derive some a formula for a, an, an equation for an ellipse. So this, these are the standard equations of standard equations equations of an ellipse of an ellipse so basically uh, there are basically the, the what we do over here of course um, if you if you imagine that this is for example the xy plane over here in the and if this is your x-axis and y-axis of course you can have an ellipse in any sort of orientation in in the xy plane imagining that for example for example you could have an ellipse over here you could have an ellipse for example in this orientation you could have an ellipse in this orientation and imagine basically uh, assuming that this is the axis of symmetry assuming that this is the axis of symmetry assuming that this is the axis of symmetry or you can have an in an, an an ellipse basically in any sort of orientation in the xy plane of course that's possible but what we do over here basically at least in the beginning we are just simply you know, basically focusing on very simple cases of ellipses meaning that the case where the basically the, the the center of the ellipse is basically the center of the coordinate system and the the major and minor axes of the of, of the ellipse are are exactly along the along the x axis and the y axis meaning that either basically the major axis is of course the center is all over here at the at the origin of the coordinate system and if the if the major axis along is along the x-axis then you will get for example something like this and something like this and then you will have an ellipse in this in this orientation and for example these would be for example f1 and f2 the two foci or basically what we will do is that we will basically we can also have this case over here where basically the center of the coordinate system o is the center of the ellipse but now the major axis is is over here on the y-axis and then you would get your ellipse basically in this in this orientation in this orientation and so for example in this case you would have f1 f2 and for example you could call these for example these points the, the vertices for example a and b and for example these points you could call c and d and uh, the the basically the coordinates of these two points would be for example this would be c comma zero this would be negative c comma zero and then we have uh, you could have any point on you could have any point on your if if you imagine that this is your ellipse then you could have any point on your ellipse and then based on the definition of an ellipse then of course if, we, if, if you can imagine that this is point p x comma y and of course then p f1 plus p f2 would be a constant distance and in this case then the then the equation of the ellipse would be the equation of the ellipse would be basically x squared divided by a squared and a as and a you know that it is basically this distance over here this is basically a this is basically b this is b and this distance over here 
resistance over here would be C. Resistance over here would be would be C. Of course, the C is just the point over here. This is nothing. Has nothing to do with C over there. This is point C. This and this is lowercase C. So, in this in this orientation, basically, then you would uh, the equation of the of the ellipse is going to be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared y squared over b squared is going to be equal to 1 and we will derive this formula uh, shortly and if we have the same ellipse in this orientation then of course you would have for example your basically your, your f1 and f2 over here this would be um, basically this would be um, this would be basically 0 comma 0 comma c 0 comma c and this would be 0 comma negative c and 0 comma negative c and then for example this 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 distance would of course be a so this distance over here would be would be a over here so then, 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 then this point, the coordinates of this point would be 0, comma, a. The coordinates of this point would be 0, comma, negative a. And, and of course, you know that this distance over here is, is b. So then the coordinates of this point would be basically b, comma, 0. The coordinates of this point would be negative b, comma, 0. And that, and in, the, in this case, the, the 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 equation of the of the ellipses would be basically x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared is equal to one. You see that a squared and b squared are are, are have been interchanged over here. So that is basically. That is basically now what we will do in this section is that we will derive this this formula, this equation, and I suppose that's basically all that we will do here. Yes. So there is not much here to discuss. So now again, suppose that, for example, you have your you have your coordinate axis here, and you have basically these two points over here, and these two points over here, and and you have, for example, this is point A, this is point B, this is point C. And this is point D. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. And you have basically these two points over here. Call them F1 and F2. With coordinates uh, basically. Um, with coordinates uh, C. Oh, I'm sorry, negative C. With coordinates negative C negative c comma zero and c comma zero and c comma zero and you can have any point on the on your basically on your uh, on your ellipse and this point if i if i call it px comma y then of course you know that these two distances added together would be constant no matter where you pitch the point p so, so now let's say that F1 and F2 are the foci and O is the midpoint. O over here is the midpoint of, of the line segment F1, F2. And O is the origin and the line, 
basically from O to F to be the positive and this is the positive x the positive x axis direction this is the positive y, basically y axis direction um, and well uh, we have already written the coordinates of these two points this is the coordinates this over here is the are the coordinates of this point negative c comma zero is that is basically f one which is this point and this point over here is f two which is c comma zero so these are basically these points over here now Now in the previous video, I suppose, we, we basically, we had, we basically, we found a, some relationship between, between, I mean, in the section that we were talking about the relationship between A, B and C in a, in an ellipse, the, the first thing that we found was that basically if you have an ellipse over here, for example, and if you have any point on the, on the, on the ellipse, and if you connect that point to basically F1 and F2, then you can write PF1 plus PF2 plus PF2 is equal to 2A. This we basically found out in the previous video. Now, we can basically, using this equation, we can find out what the, what, 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 what the equation for a, for an ellipse would be. Meaning that you can find this distance over here using the distance formula. Find this distance over here using the distance formula. Add them together. Equate them to 2a. And that would give you an equation for this ellipse. And the reason why this works because this is, well, this is basically the definition of an ellipse. So, so based on the definition of the ellipse, we are simply deriving a formula in terms of uh, in terms of x, y, and uh, a and b. Basically, that's all that we are doing here. So, now the basically p f one p f one is equal to you know that the distance formula is a b is equal to the square root of x two minus x one all squared plus y two minus y one all squared. This is the distance formula. So now since you want to find p f one, one of the points is x comma y, the other point is negative c comma negative c comma zero mean. write this properly here this point over here this point over here is f1 and the coordinates of the point are negative c comma zero and this point over here are is f2 this point over here is f2 and the coordinates of the point are c comma zero so now I have two points over here, basically P and F1. So the coordinates of P are X comma Y and the coordinates of F1 are basically negative C comma zero. So then using this formula, X2 minus X1, I can write X minus negative C, which is X plus C all squared. I have to take the square root of this thing plus y2 minus y1 so uh, x minus 0 whole squared which is I'm sorry y minus 0 whole squared which is y squared which is y squared so that is pf1 and basically pf2 pf2 is equal to basically p is again x comma y and f2 is basically c comma 0. So you can write the square root of x minus c whole squared plus y squared plus y squared. 
So, so over here we said that PF1 plus PF2 is equal to 2A. That means that you can write basically X plus C, the square root of X plus C, or the square plus Y squared, uh, plus the square root of X minus C, all the squared plus y squared is equal to is equal to two a. Or you can write you can write basically the square root of x plus c whole squared plus y squared is equal to two a minus basically take this to the other side of the equation. The square root of x minus c all the square plus y squared. And then if you if you square both sides of this equation, squaring both sides, if you square both sides of this equation, you would get x plus c all the squared plus y squared is equal to 2a minus the square root of um, 2a minus well over here basically if you square this thing what you will get is that is basically 2a minus the square root of x minus c all the squared plus y squared and if you square it it's basically a minus b whole squared. So x a minus b whole squared is equal to a squared, which is 2a whole squared, plus b squared, which is basically this whole thing whole squared, which is, so you would basically the, the square root function will be cancelled out, so you have x minus c whole squared, plus y squared, and then, so a squared, a minus b, a minus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So minus 2ab in this case would be negative 2 times a, which is basically 2a times b, which is basically this thing over here. So we have x minus c whole squared plus y squared. And so if you simplify this, if you simplify this, you will get basically, you will get 4 times a squared plus x squared plus c squared minus 2 times cx plus y squared minus 4a times the square root of x minus c whole squared plus y squared. So this is what you would get on this side of the equation. I write it over here, 4a squared plus x squared plus c squared minus 2 times cx plus y squared minus 4 times a times square root of x minus c all squared plus y squared. And, of course, you need to basically expand the other side of the equation as well. Meaning that you can write over here basically x squared plus c squared plus 2 times cx plus y squared is equal to basically this whole thing coming down here. Okay, so now if you basically write down these terms down here you would you could cancel out x squared with x squared six c squared with c squared y squared with y squared and so you can you could write and so you could write basically um could take this to the other side of the equation so that would give you negative 4cx so that would give you basically 4 
basically if you if you keep this on this side and 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 move everything to the other side you would get basically 2cx plus 2cx plus 2cx minus 4 times a squared is equal to negative 4a times the square root of x minus c whole squared plus y squared plus y squared and that is basically 4 times cx minus 4 times a squared is equal to negative 4a times negative 4a times the square root of x minus c whole squared all squared plus y squared and if you divide by 4 you will get cx minus a squared is equal to negative a um, negative a the square root of x minus c whole squared plus y squared and so if you multiply by a negative 1 if you multiply by a negative 1 you would get a you would get a squared minus cx is equal to a or a times the square root of x minus c all squared plus y squared and if you divide by a you would get basically a minus c by a times x is equal to the square root of x minus c all squared plus y squared plus y squared and now if you basically raise both sides of this equation to the second power, you will get a minus c by a times x whole squared. You would have basically x minus c whole squared plus y squared. And then what happens is that if you raise this to the second power, you would get... Uh, you would get basically um, okay so suppose that you have for example a minus c by a times x whole squared this is a squared plus c by a whole squared thing that c squared by a squared times x squared and negative 2 times a times c by a times x a and a would cancel out so you would have negative 2 cx negative 2 cx so this this side of the equation becomes becomes a squared plus c squared by a squared times x squared minus 2 cx and And this side of the equation becomes basically x squared plus c squared minus 2cx plus y squared. And then you can cancel these two out. Uh, and then you have... You have... Uh, So you would have x squared and y squared and one. Okay, so I I I I, I move this this to the other side of the equation and also this one. So I have basically c squared by a squared times x squared minus x squared. Move this to the other side and move that to the other side minus y squared is equal to. So now basically x squared and y squared are taken care of. This this term is taken care of. So I have to move to this to the other side. So that gives me c squared minus a squared. C squared minus a squared. So then then basically you can write x squared times c squared by a squared minus one. Uh, minus y squared is equal to c squared minus a squared and um, well you know that let me let me basically write this as x squared times 
basically a squared c squared minus a squared minus y squared is equal to c squared minus a squared now you know that basically we said that basically a squared was equal to b squared plus c squared so then c squared minus a squared is equal to negative b squared so if over here if i write so take take this to the other side of the equation negative b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared so c squared minus a squared is equal to negative b squared. So I, over here I can write negative b squared, negative b squared by a squared times x squared minus y squared is equal to negative b squared and so uh, if i multiply by by an by an a squared to get rid of this in the denominator i get negative b squared uh, multiplying by a squared times x squared minus a squared times y squared is equal to um, basically um, negative a squared b squared negative a squared b squared and so if i divide by If I divide by a squared b squared and a negative 1, so if I multiply by negative 1, I'll get b squared x squared plus a squared y squared is equal to a squared b squared. Divide by a squared b squared, so b squared x squared divided by a squared b squared plus a squared y squared divided by a squared b squared is equal to a squared b squared over a squared b squared. So this becomes 1. Over here these two will be cancelled out. These two will be cancelled out. So you have x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to 1. And that is the that is the, the, the equation of a parabola. Uh, I'm sorry, not another not, not a parabola, but an, but an ellipse. So then you can say that, you can say hence, you can say hence any point on the ellipse, any point, this is important, meaning that you need to pay attention to why I'm writing down this sentence. Otherwise, I wouldn't be writing it down. Any point on the on the ellipse on the ellipse uh, satisfies satisfies this equation. Satisfies this equation. Since we, since basically we started with a, just a random point on the ellipse, so then we can conclude that any point on the ellipse will satisfy this equation. Now, one more thing that we need to show here is that if, if any point satisfies this equation, that point is going to be on the ellipse. So that, that is also that that is also basically and then when you put these two basically that would be the converse of this the converse of this of, of what we have shown right now what we have shown is that any point on the ellipse will satisfy this equation if you show that any point that satisfies this equation uh, any point that satisfies this, this equation is also on the ellipse then then you can safely say that this is an equation for 
basically that sort of ellipse that we started with so for the second part or the converse of this or the converse of this I can say that conversely conversely now let any point some some point P for example with the coordinates X and Y that let this point basically satisfy this equation satisfy equation number for example I call it equation number two just arbitrarily satisfy equation equation two so I'm I'm, I'm making this assumption making the, the assumption that P with coordinates X and Y satisfies this equation and from that I want to conclude that basically if the point satisfies this equation then it is going to be it is going to be a point that lies on the ellipse and then that's basically the converse that I want to basically prove here so let let p x comma y satisfy satisfy this equation number 2 with with basically 0 less than c less than a meaning that uh, if you an, if you have an ellipse over here if you have an ellipse over here this distance over here is basically a and this distance over here let's say that this is f2 for example this distance over here is C so C is greater than 0 meaning that it's not it's not on the center of the of, of the ellipse but it is less than a meaning that it's not it's not quite a it's somewhere between 0 and 0 and a basically that's basically the assumption that I that, that I'm making so now uh, basically then you can then if this point satisfies this equation then I can then the equation is basically x squared by a squared plus y squared by y squared by b squared is equal to 1 and so I can write I can write basically y squared by y squared by b squared is equal to 1 minus x squared by a squared x squared by a squared and then if I and then I can I can write this as basically y squared is equal to basically b squared times 1 minus x squared by a squared so that's basically what I can write over here now the the point that we had up here basically pf1 pf1 was basically this distance over here make a screenshot of this so this was the this was the distance that we had of pf1 so now pf1 now basically pf1 pf1 was equal to uh, x plus c whole the square root of x plus c whole squared whole squared plus y squared plus y squared now since since I'm assuming that this point satisfies this equation and then I made some changes to the to the equation to get basically to get it into this form then of course I can I can use it now I can use it in the in the case of the same of this in this in the case of the same um, ellipse right I'm, I'm making this assumption that this point satisfies this equation so now this equation is basically since the point satisfies the equation I can still use the, that equation in whatever I do based on the assumption that I made so so then basically I can write this as basically now y squared over here I can just write it as 
this thing over here, which is the square root of x plus c whole squared plus b squared times times 1 minus x squared by a squared. I can take the square root of this whole thing and um, and of course you know that uh, you know that basically we said that uh, we said that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared so instead of b squared I can write a squared minus c squared so I can write this as the square root of x plus c whole squared plus b squared a minus a squared minus c squared a squared minus c squared times 1 minus x squared by a squared I take the square root of basically this thing over here and uh, basically if you now you need to basically we need to simplify this thing but you need to not actually forget what we did here because because this is this is I mean that the process I mean that the algebra is of course important you need to basically get through your algebra but the process of course I will in the once once we're done with the process then I will get you back here and show you what the process was <coughs> let me create a new layer here and oh i forgot to i forgot to make a screenshot okay so i make a screenshot here because i need to take it to the okay so so now so now what we had was that pf1 pf1 was equal to the square root of x plus c whole squared plus a squared minus c squared times the times 1 minus x squared by a squared x squared minus a squared and if you do some simplification here what you will get is Basically, you need to to expand everything over here. It's it, it's basically x squared plus c squared plus two c x plus, uh, and of course, before I do that, I'm going to just write this as I'm going to write this as the square root of x plus c whole squared plus a squared minus c squared. So a squared minus c squared. So I'm going to write this as basically times a squared and a squared minus x squared. I'm going to write it this way. And now this this you can write as you can write that as the square root of x squared plus c plus c squared plus two times c x plus basically um, a raised to the power 4 a raised to the power 4 plus a squared minus sorry minus minus a squared x squared minus a squared c squared plus c squared x squared c squared x squared over a squared and then I'm going to write this as I'm going to write this as basically the square root of x squared plus c squared plus 2 times cx a raised to the power 4 over a, a raised to the power 2 is, is a squared and over here these two will be cancelled out you'll get negative x squared negative c squared plus 
c squared by a squared times x squared times x squared. And then what you can do here is these two you can cancel out, these two you can cancel out. You have a squared to 2 times cx and you have these three terms over here. Now, if you have, um, basically let's say that you have, you have basically c squared, uh, c squared by a squared times x squared plus 2 times cx plus a squared. So I can write this as c by a times x whole squared. And then I can write this as 2 times cx and I can write this as a squared. So now if I, and this term over here, I can write it as 2 times c by a times x times a right so now if a and a cancels out you will get two times cx which is what you have over here now if you pay attention to this to this thing over here you have c by a times x whole squared plus this thing over here plus a squared now if i take as basically if I take c by a times x, if I take it as, for example, um, if I take this as m, and if I take this a as, if I take this a as n, this becomes m plus n whole squared, which is equal to m squared plus 2mn plus n squared. So I can add order, order Basically, normally we, we write this as a plus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But since we have a, b, and things over here, so I just write it, wrote it in terms of m and n. So what this means is that you can write this, you can write this as c by a times x plus, plus a whole squared. So I can write this as the square root of, as the square root of c by a times x plus a whole squared, whole squared, which is equal to c by a times x plus a. Okay, so far we have no problem. But now we need to show that basically what we did in the basically after once we got we got started with the word conversely basically what we did in the in the first step we showed that basically the equation of the of the of the let me stop here for just a moment I'll be back in just a moment okay so. So basically what we did, just to, to uh, just as a recap, we had this, we had this basically ellipse, basically this ellipse over here. We started with basically F1, F2, and we had this P point P over here, and we had P F1, P F2, and so on and so forth. And basically we showed that the equation of this of this ellipse was basically x squared over a squared plus y squared over over b squared is equal to one. We showed that the equation of this ellipse was this was this equation. And so what that meant was that any point that you pick on this ellipse basically that point is going to, to, to satisfy this equation. That's basically what that meant. Now we had this, this basically these two distances over here, and that was basically PF1 and PF2, right? 
Now, when we started with the with the with the with the reverse process, we said that we said that let's um, we we assume that there was a point on the there was a point on this ellipse, and we assume that this point uh, that this point satisfies satisfies this equation, and then we came up with. And then we started to basically calculate this this distance PF one. We started to calculate basically this distance PF one, and PF one became basically C by A times X plus plus A. Now, it, as it turns out, if you do the same thing for PF two, so this is equal to basically PF one. Now, as it turns out, if you if you do if you go through the same process for PF two, PF two is going to be equal to a minus c divided by a times x, a minus c divided by a times x. Now, if I if I added these two, basically PF one and PF two, so if I write PF one plus PF two. And add write this as c divided by a times x plus a plus a minus c divided by a times x. You see these two will cancel out, and you'll end up you'll end up with two a. That means that that means that if there is a point, if there is a point that if there is a point p, that means that if there is a point p with coordinates x and y that satisfies this equation. If you take the if you take the distance between that point and and the focus one, and if you take the distance of that of the same point with focus two and add them together, you'll get two a, and that was basically that was basically something that we found out in in ellipses that basically any point that you find any point that you find on the on the ellipse. The distance, the sum of the distances of that point with the with the two foci is going to be two a. That means that any point that satisfies this equation is going to be on the ellipse. Okay, so that's what that what that's that's what this means. So. So then I can say that any point, so any point that satisfies, that satisfies any point that satisfies this equation, equation number two. Equation number two satisfies the satisfies the geometric condition geometric condition and the condition is basically assuming that having the same the same basically setup over here. PF one plus PF two is equal to two A. Satisfies the geometric condition, and so and so basically P x comma y lies on the ellipse. Lies on the ellipse. Lies on the ellipse. So basically, then we we basically prove that 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 we we basically we prove that the equation the equation of the of the ellipse of the ellipse. We prove that the equation of the ellipse with center 
with center basically zero comma zero or the or the origin or the origin and and the major axis and the major axis along the x axis along the x axis is basically this equation over here is x squared by a squared plus y squared by y squared by b squared is equal to 1 and that is basically that is basically all that we did here now there is some uh, there is a couple of things that we need to discuss here before we before we basically conclude this part and that is that there is a couple of basically these little things that we need to discuss here so um, so from from the equation that we got which was basically this equation over here um, basically for if if this is the equation of the ellipse that we talked about then we can say that for for every point for every point p with coordinates x comma with coordinates x comma y um, on the ellipse on the ellipse we have we have basically you can write since basically the the logic that is used here is 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 very simple so basically these are basically two quantities and the sum of these quantities has been is equal to one for example let's say that for example 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 is equal to i write this equation 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 is equal to one it's basically the same situation now if if this if basically if this thing is equal to if this if the sum of these two quantities is equal to one that means that each of these quantities is less than or equal to one none of them can be greater than one because the sum of them is is equal to one meaning that i can write 0 0.2 is less than or equal to one and also 0 0.8 is less than or equal to one now i can use the same logic over here and basically write this equation as x squared by a squared is equal to 1 minus basically y squared by b squared and that is less than or equal to 1 and so what that means is that x squared by a squared is less than or equal to 1 so you can write this as x squared is less than or equal to less than or equal to a squared which means that which means that if you if you solve this 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 um, equation or this this uh, inequality basically i'm not going to solve it here because uh, because uh, Well, because we have some other we have some other section basically related to these inequalities we will solve it over there it would take a, a, a lot of time and it, it's not it's not re it's, it's not really related to here but uh, basically if you have this sort of inequality and if you want to solve it the the the, the solution is going to be basically negative a is less than or equal to is less than or equal to x less than less than or equal to a this is going to be the solution this is what this this inequality means and of course you can verify the same thing on number line and it that that's basically what it means what that means is that and what this means is that if you have negative a is less than or equal to x less than or equal to a 
And what this means is that basically you're on the x-axis, on the x-axis your 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 ellipse is is basically between these two lines between between the line x is equal to negative a and x is equal to a and it is actually touching these two lines because because you see it's it's less than or equal to less than or equal to it's touching these two lines uh, which is basically which is basically this port this this point over here and this point over here and you have basically your your ellipse in this for example let's say that this is in this configuration so this is the line for example x is equal to negative a and this is the line x is equal to a and you know that this this uh, this whole distance is always equal to 2a so so basically you, you, your ellipse is always between the lines x is equal to negative a and x is equal to a and it's, it's touching those two lines also since we had basically x squared by by a squared plus plus y squared by b squared is equal to one you can write y squared by b squared is equal to one minus x squared by a squared which is again less than or equal to one so you can write y squared by b squared is less than or equal to one which means that y squared is less than or equal to b squared and that means that basically negative b is less than or equal to y less than or equal to b so again basically this 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 line over here is basically this line over here is y is equal to b and this line over here is y is equal to negative b and your your ellipse is basically between these two lines the upper limit and the lower limit you would you could say and it is actually touching these two lines because you have less than or equal to less than or equal to that is that is one more thing that that, that you could pay attention to and it's, it's it comes in handy sometimes probably in solving some problems or you're 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 doing something and, and, and you're working with ellipses this this might come in handy and uh, uh, basically uh, and there are there is there is basically one more form of the equation of the of the ellipses that we can discuss here which was basically this this form of the equation which was basically something like this and we said that we said that the the major axis of the the major axis of the semis of the of the ellipse was across the y-axis and here basically you have this this is basically this the, the, the coordinates of this point is zero comma a this point was zero comma negative a this point is zero basically b comma zero this point would be negative b comma zero and we have these two points over here for example f1 and f2 with coordinates basically zero comma c and over here zero comma negative c and if you have if you have your if you have your your major axis along the along the y-axis then instead of x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to one instead of this you will have x squared by b squared plus y squared by a squared is equal to one so these are the two different equations that we derived and of course we did not derive this you could derive this in the same way that it, that 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 we derived this one of course but that would take way too way way too long and it's basically well the same process and these are known as the standard equations these are known as the standard standard 
equations of of ellipse. These are known as the standard equations of ellipse. And and of course you do know that basically the standard the standards the, the basically the standard equations of ellipse have always have this always have the center of the of the ellipse at the center of the coordinate system and uh, the center of the ellipse at the center of the coordinate system and the ma and the major and minor axes along the along the x and y axis um, but of course you know that it's 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 of course possible to to move your ellipse to any other to any any to any spot on the on the x y plane but that would be beyond the scope of basically what we are doing here here we are just getting familiar with these ellipses and of course there is a couple more things over here that we can discuss as well which are basically there are a couple of things let me see so there is one thing over here there are some observations that they have called it observations so basically you know that the an ellipse is symmetric with respect to the x-axis and also with respect to the y-axis meaning that if you have an ellipse over here and let's say that you have an ellipse in this basically way in this arrangement over here so it an ellipse is basically based on the based on the very definition of an ellipse it is uh, they are basically they are they are basically they are symmetric about the about both the axes now if the axes happen to be the the same basically the the, the coordinate axis the y axis and the and the x axis then you can say that basically all ellipses are symmetric about the y axis and also symmetric about the about the x axis meaning that if you pick some any point over here for example x comma y then if you drop it perpendicular to the x axis then you will get some point over here and this point would be basically x comma negative y then if you basically drop a perpendicular to the y-axis you will get some point over here on the ellipse which is going to be negative x comma y drop a perpendicular over here you will get a point over here which is basically negative x comma negative y so you see that it's it, you see that your your the the ellipse is symmetric about the about the y-axis and also the, about the x-axis and one more important thing is that one 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 important thing is that the um, it's just like a definition I mean you I mean it's it's just it seems to be like a definition but uh, basically the the foci of of an ellipse are always are always basically they, they always lie on the on the major axis so this is the major axis this is the major axis and the foci are always on the major axis f1 and f2 um, and the major axis basically the way that you can find of course we will deal with this most probably in the exercises but the way that you can find that you can determine the the, the major axis is, is is by finding the intercepts on the axis of symmetry now if the axis of symmetry of this of this happen to be the, the y-axis and the x-axis for example what happens is that the intercepts would be basically 
here is one intercept here you would have one intercept here you would have one intercept here you have one intercept and one intercept so and these are of course the axes of symmetry and 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 now they happen to be basically the x-axis and the y-axis now uh, the major axis the major axis is basically uh, the major axis is along the x-axis if the coefficient of x squared has the larger denominator so this is this is a this is a basically a condition that that you need to understand it so it says that it says that the major axis the major axis is along the is along the x axis if if the coefficient of x squared the coefficient of the coefficient of you are going to need this the coefficient of x squared meaning that in the equation of the of the of the of the ellipse we write co x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by d squared is equal to 1 now the coefficient of x squared over here is 1 over x, 1 over a squared and the coefficient of y squared over here is 1 over b squared now if the coefficient of the of the x squared has the larger denominator as the as the larger as the larger denominator meaning that if meaning that if in this basically having your your equation like this if a squared is greater than b squared then that means that your major axis is along the x-axis and the major axis is along the y-axis if, if the coefficient of y squared has a has a larger denominator so basically the same condition you can use for the for the for the y-axis this is this is important and and it's it's something that you need to pay attention to okay so so that is that now there is there is only one thing remaining here and that is the lattice rectum of a of a of an ellipse let's do that as well and then we will get to we have some exercises to do here as well there is quite a lot of work to do here and we do need to basically um, get it done properly so does need a long time okay okay so now about the lattice rectum about the lattice about the lattice rectum of the lattice rectum of an ellipse of an ellipse so first of all let's let's, let's as a definition as a definition 
you can we can say that the lattice rectum of an ellipse is a line segment so if you have a if you have a basically yeah if you have a this this ellipse over here and let's say that this is these are the two foci f1 and f2 and if i draw two perpendiculars to the to the major axis from these two points i will have these two point, these two line segments over here so then you can say that we can say that the, the lattice rectum and this is basically this length over here this length over here is the is the length of the the length of the of the lattice rectum so the lattice rectum of the of the ellipse which is basically the same as the same as this one because your ellipse is symmetry so um, so you can say that the lattice the lattice rectum of an ellipse of an ellipse is a line segment is a line segment perpendicular to perpendicular to the major axis to the major axis through any of the foci through any of the foci and whose endpoints and whose endpoints endpoints lie on the ellipse lie on the ellipse lie on the ellipse now this was the definition so you have basically a piece of line a line segment that is perpendicular to the to the to the to the major uh, to the major axis and it, it it goes through the it goes through any of the foci and the endpoints of that of that line segment lie on the on the ellipse that is basically the that is basically the lattice rectum now to find the uh, to find the to find the length of the length of the lattice rectum what you need to do is that um, basically uh, and suppose that for example your 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 basically your ellipse is x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared is equal to 1 now if you set if you suppose that for example the length of af2 if i call this point for example a and b and af2 would be this this length over here if i call this l so if i let af2 be equal to l um, and so if that if that's 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 the case then then the coordinates of then the coordinates of then the coordinates of a are basically your your c uh, you know that 
you know that your 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 focus your your focus is at a at a distance c from the center. So the x coordinate over here would be c, and the y coordinate is basically it. C comma c comma l. So. And we said that basically, and we said that if you remember, we said that since the since the focus is at a, is at a at the distance of c from the center, in terms of basically in terms of eccentricity, it is at at a, at the distance of a e away from the center, because we defined the eccentricity as basically e is equal to. Um, basically c divided by a we said that eccentricity of a of an ellipse was was c divided by a that means that c is equal to a e so then i can write this as basically c as a e comma l so that is basically that now this point over here which is basically by the way the point a over here the point a this point, this point A, lies on the, on the ellipse, on the ellipse, so, lies on the ellipse, so we can say basically, basically the x coordinate and the y coordinate of this point, I can put it in this equation. So if I call this equation number one, and equation number one becomes basically a e divided by basically whole squared divided by divided by a squared plus y squared, which is l squared divided by b squared is equal to one. And so I can write basically a squared e squared divided by a squared plus l squared divided by b squared is equal to 1. And so you can cancel these two out. And so you can let me change the colors here. So I can write basically l squared by b squared is equal to 1 minus e squared. And so I can write um, l squared is equal to is equal to b is equal to b squared times one minus e squared, and uh, and basically you know that you do know that basically uh, e squared is equal to you do know that e squared is equal to basically since since e is equal to c divided by c divided by a then e squared is going to be equal to c squared by a squared so so then you can instead of this you can write l squared is equal to b squared times times 1 minus c squared by a squared c squared by a squared and and basically we said that we said that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared that means that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared so i can write this as b squared times 1 minus basically a squared minus b squared over a squared so i can write this as i can write this as b squared times 1 minus a squared by a squared is equal to 1 uh, basically let me write it this way 1 minus b squared by a squared b squared by a squared so i can write this as b squared times 1 minus 1 plus b squared by a squared and these two will be cancelled out so you're left with 
with b raised to the power 4 over a raised to the power 2 and that is equal to l squared so then l is going to be equal to b raised to the power 2 over a now over here so l is basically this distance over here this distance over here a f squared now since your your ellipse is symmetric about well both the y-axis and both the y-axis and the x-axis then of course you know that in over here basically a b which is the the length of the lattice rectum is equal to a f squared uh, i'm sorry a f2 times 2 so a f2 times 2 so a f2 is basically a f2 is basically l which is equal to l times 2 so now over here i can write i can write so then l times 2 is equal to 2 times b squared over a which is the length of the the length of the of the lattice rectum rectum of of an of an ellipse so that is basically what we were looking for so the length of a lattice of the lattice rectum of an ellipse is 2b squared by a that's basically the whole story now we have a couple of exercises here we will go through them as well in the next video. See you in the next video.